Oh, Night Watcher. I always thought he was pretty gnarly. Maybe, but the police disagreed. They thought his methods were too drastic and too violent. Raphael, did you really become the Night Watcher because you thought the police were not doing enough? Nobody was. You remember what it was like, Sensei? Crime was everywhere, and innocent people were scared. It wasn't right. So I decided to become the Night Watcher and give the criminal scum something to be afraid of. And besides, dude, that costume was styling. Well, Mikey, personally, uh, no offense, Raph, I never really liked the Night Watcher's style much. I prefer a more sophisticated, high-tech approach. Oh, what a surprise. But, Dawn, you had sophisticated, high-tech enemies. That is true. I thought it was just gonna be an ordinary night for so I did what I used to do. I don't know who wrote the script for the video game, but if they could please stop pretending that all the character development from the movie didn't happen, that would be great. Because the character development in the movie is excellent, and I wish you could, you know, just leave it. Leave it intact, please. Stop pretending it didn't happen. What's wrong with you? Why do you need to do- why do you feel the need to do that? Anyway, onto the platforming. There's a lot of platforms to take us over the sewer water, but there's no technical penalty if we touch the sewer water. Like I said in the first level, the reason to avoid the sewer water is simply because you want to go fast. If you were just playing the game casually, you could walk right through the sewer water, no one would stop you. Just like the 3D Sonic games though, I find this game is a lot more enjoyable if you're trying to do the best you can. Like, anybody could probably beat this game, no problem, just like anybody can beat most of the 3D Sonic games, no problem, but... You shouldn't just try and beat the game. You should try to do the best you can, otherwise the game's just what way you playing it in the first place. It's like people who play Dynasty Warriors just mashing a square. Yeah, you can play Dynasty Warriors just mashing a square, but what are you trying to prove? That's not the idea behind the game. It's not meant to be hard. That's not, that's not the point. I think you're missing the idea. You know, there's a reason this game has a ranking system and why there's a timer that constantly appears at every checkpoint. Anyway, here's Donatello's unique platforming mechanic. He can use his pole to vault himself over gaps. There are actually a few situations later in the game where this is useful, but it's very situational. I think we only have to use it two more times in the entire game. Anyway, this level gives me the most trouble out of any level in the game for one simple reason. The wall running. The wall running is not like the ledge grabbing. Uh, it doesn't snap you to the wall like you do when you ledge grab. And I often completely mess up the wall running because of the variable jumping. Which may sound weird, you figure the variable jumping would make it easier for me. But I often end up uh, overshooting the wall run. And that's probably not the game's fault, that's probably my fault entirely. By the way, if we fall in this goo, we take a brief time penalty because we have to get back up. We have to do our little animation to get out of the goo. The wall running may look really easy and simple, but I had to restart the level like 10 times because of that wall running section back there. Because I just kept goofing it up. And again, that's probably my fault. But still, this level gives me more trouble than any other level in the game. And it doesn't help that later in the game they give you a way to circumvent wall running, they give you a mechanic basically dedicated to getting around wall running. Which works out well for me, but it means that, that this level's even harder. But the uncut video footage was like 40 minutes for this, for this level, and that was after I closed down the game capture and restarted it because I was wasting too much video footage. Anyway, something very important I learned from this ledge grabbing section, very, very important. When you jump from one ledge to another, hold down X, don't just tap it. Because as I said, you know, variable jump length, please make sure you're holding down X. Don't just tap it or you'll fall, you'll fall straight into the pit. I also have bad memories of this level and the next one for an unrelated reason, but we'll get to that later because I'm going to need the stories since the next level's so long. As for swinging on poles, which we've done a few times now, just mashing X does the job fine. Don't need to worry about timing at all. Just mash the X button. It'll work out. Hey, it's fight time! These goons are the Black Gators, and they are the easiest enemies in the game by far. They move very slowly, they don't have any surprises up their sleeve. We just want to move far away from them, hold circle, and let go of circle. Like we have been doing. Maybe it's worth saying that Donatello has my favorite of all the basic combos in the game because his pole grants him great reach. 
It's also easy to fling yourself off ledges with his basic combo, but since we're never going to be using his basic combo unless it's really necessary, there's no reason to worry about that. You know, the back of this case advertises that each turtle has their own fighting style, which is accurate, even though you use the same buttons and mechanics for all of them. Each turtle's basic combo is very, very different, and if you try to use them the same way, you'll end up getting your ass kicked because they all have different utilities. The problem is that you never need to use the basic combos to, to begin with. Just use that, uh, that homing attack where you hold down circle, just do that over and over. Seriously, no reason to bother with the basic combos at all. So you've got your basic moving laser puzzles here. Add a bit of variety, nothing too special about them. If you get hit by them, you get stunned for a second, and that's it. You could easily tank the whole section, unless, again, you're trying to go fast, like we are. So we want to avoid that. Hey, it's time for another combat section, and this is kind of the last one in the level. Kind of. Not really. But it's the last normal combat section. And it's really easy, because now we have all ten stars, which means our mega attack is ready. Now the Mega Attack I think looks really cool, it's really fun to use, but it's as brain dead as it gets. You hold down circle and let go of circle. Then again, most of the combat is pretty dull and oversimplified, so I guess it fits. And here's the last platforming section of the level I think you could you, you could uh, consider challenging. If we fall into the electrified lava, lava, electrified water, then we take a brief stun but aside from that, there's there's no real penalty, except to our time, which again is a big deal. Even though this section seems like basic moving platforms across water, and it is, it really shows off the variable jump height and length. Like, you're seeing me using the double tap jump here, which gives us a lot of height but not a lot of length. We could also single jump across these platforms, or we could skip some of the platforms by uh, by maximizing our double jump. Anyway, it's time for the boss battle now. Strange monster indeed. <laughs> Look who's talking. I'm a teenage mutant ninja turtle, and the name is Don. Choosing the turtle as your totem was your first mistake, monster. You know, you talk way too much for a living statue. The bosses in this game are weird. I'm not sure how else to put them. They feel almost entirely removed from the rest of the design. It's kind of surreal. But let's talk about this boss's pattern. This boss has two basic attacks. He'll throw junk at us, and he'll dash at us. We can hold down R1 and move the control stick in order to dodge. Which I didn't do in time there. But after he dashes at us, if we dodge properly, there's an opening. Now, in my defense, someone did walk in front of the TV. This boss also has a super attack, which is, well, you saw it, and you just stand in one position to avoid it. So basically, for his two basic attacks, use the dodge, such as this, and he'll leave himself open. And for the super attack, just stand in the safe zone. I'm not sure why the super attack is there when it's so easy to avoid. Not a hard boss in the slightest camera angle might give some people trouble. You have to remember to dodge after he lunges and not before he lunges, but aside from that, it's pretty simple. So as I was saying, the boss fights in this game feel very surreal. They don't feel like a natural extension of the combat. And... I mean, you're supposed to use the dodging mechanic in normal combat, too. There's no reason to, but you're supposed to. But it makes it feel more weird, because I have to use the dodging mechanic almost exclusively for the boss battles. It's just strange. Feels like a completely separate game mode, really. Makes me wonder why there isn't a boss rush mode. Wait, never mind, I just remembered why there isn't. So anyway, after we beat the guy, a ladder lowers, and if we're in the way, it scoots us politely out of the way. Now after we move up this ladder, the water starts to rise, oh no! Thankfully, it's no problem to outrun the water, because the way up to the top of the level is incredibly basic stuff. Like, really basic. If you have even the slightest idea of how the variable jump height works, then this is no problem. Really easy. Probably the easiest part of the level, actually. 
Sadly, we did waste a bit too much time to get an A plus rank in our speed, but we'll still get an A plus rank overall. Still, could have gone faster. Probably couldn't. Have, probably shouldn't have fallen in the goo. Probably shouldn't have gotten zapped that one time. This is the Black Gator stash. All this stuff. Huh. Guess they won't mind if I borrow a couple of things. 